Good afternoon, THL, and welcome to Saturday School Stone. Class is back in session. It's been seven weeks of the season, and we haven't had a Saturday School Stone. But here we are. Uh, I am Dr. Fish. I'll be your op. I'll, I'll generally just be in the background for this match. And alongside me, I have uh, Nice Jewish Owl and Memnar casting. Hello. How are you guys doing? I am doing good this morning. How about you guys? I'm also doing quite well. Yeah, I, I'm doing good. I'm excited to see the battle of my captains. <laughs> yeah. This is, also this is cool. Also, a bit, bit of an F2L showdown with Rebuff and Neji playing. Yeah. All right, so both players will be getting ready here shortly. Um, they are... They're, uh, Neji is... Uh, finishing decks and Rebob is probably also finishing decks. Um, so yeah, we'll get started as soon as possible. Why don't you guys go and you guys can go ahead and start start talking about the match. I mean, we don't know what's being banned yet, right? So it's hard to. We have a yeah. good idea. Like, like uh, Rebobson's probably gonna ban the warrior, cause, and uh, Neji's might ban that rogue. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, that's what I would guess if we saw just the very, like, traditional Linus Regents classes. But I also know that Neji and Rebob both uh, definitely bring some interesting decks in closed list series. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't quite know what to expect, but my gut would be that Neji does ban that rogue just because of, you know, got nerfed quite a bit, but Poison Rogue is still really, really strong into a lot of these decks. Yeah, it's, uh, it just feels like the defense has been delayed a turn, right? So you have to spend one more turn being, like, sending, like, a paralytic poison into a minion rather than face, and then you can uh, cloak, cloak into scabs still. <laughs> yeah, it's the, the defenses go down for a turn, but against, like, Priest and Warlock, they're yeah. never pressuring you before you need to scabs anyways. I mean, it could be Shadow Priest, right? Shadow Priest, that's still pretty aggressive. Yeah, Shadow Priest would be definitely the one option for Neji that would be good into that rogue, but I think the issue he has is that the rest of his classes don't have any options that'll be Poison Rogue, mm. so then you're just very, very reliant on hitting that matchup with Shadow Priest. Mm -hmm. um, although Shadow Priest isn't a terrible bring here, it is going to be quite good into a Face Hunter from Rebob, uh, as well as beating that Poison Rogue. I just don't know how cohesive it would be with the rest of his lineup. That is true. Yeah, like, what shamans could there... I know there's Overload, Doomhammer, Elemental, but, like, it's probably... And the Quest. It's probably that um, Overload Burn Shaman, though, right? That's, I haven't seen that pick up steam lately. Yeah, I, I would think from Rebob, it'll probably be that Burn Shaman, because it's pretty good into Warlock, uh, very good in the Shaman Mirror. Neji might go for something a little more controlling with either the Bolner or the um, Quest Shaman to sort of deal with that Hunter and Druid a little better. Alright. All uh, I have bans. And uh, y'all were just talking about Shaman. Well, uh, Shaman no more. It is a double Shaman ban. Interesting. I mean, Shaman's the most flexible class, right? Makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely one of the most flexible, so it's it, it's easy to justify banning it because there's probably a shaman deck that beats your lineup. And mm -hmm. You're either doing that or coin flipping, but they don't have that deck. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I'm All interested right. to see what Rebob goes for with the, the Druid Hunter and Rogue here. Because seeing that warrior across the table, you have to be sort of expecting a more controlling lineup. There, is, there is no aggressive warriors in standard, right? It's all um, control variants. You can play quest, although like it was already oh, not I've... great, and then it died for the sins of wild quest warrior. Oh, like... that. I don't think it, it, died. It, it died for the sins of wild quest warrior. While wild quest warrior hasn't died. If so anything, if anything, it got affected. stronger. <laughs> it's like no, I, it's not affected it's, in the least. It's like that it's like I feed on your hatred for my for me, and I become stronger. Yeah. 
but it, it does turn out in a deck that isn't running Ankar, making you play one more pirate is actually a big deal. <laughs> I, I have sent the players off to, to start, so uh, Neji will be first to spectate on our screen, or on my screen, and uh, Rebob will be second to spectate on the top for those okay. watching on stream. Yeah, I'm also, I'm interested to see what priest Neji opts for. Oh, uh, Neji, turn on spectate. Okay. Okay. We are going to see this priest. Ooh. And Is it, the... it appears to be a aggro shadow priest. Oh, man. He didn't and... go with the uh, quest priest? Sadly, no. Rebob, on the other hand, uh, going for a more interesting hunter deck. I see a Vandar, and we saw a Guardian Animals get pitched in that mulligan. So. Interesting. I don't think this is a great matchup for the Hunter, but also we have Vandar on four and double overwhelm. This might be like the one hand that lets Hunter win. <laughs> <laughs> How much? Well, you can delay. It can go overwhelm, overwhelm into Vandar. Ooh, and There's a game plan. Aw, <laughs> oh, Neji never plays around the second overwhelm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Vandar on four is nothing to sneeze at. Actually, with that teacher's pet picked up, he can go Vandar into Taunt. Yeah. I mean, there's a chance. There's a chance. This this is a pretty decent start from the priest, though. Started just curving out. Hasn't really hit any of the big power cards, but uh... yeah, Neji has to. Like, he's not gonna throw a void shard into that, right? Well, what do we have in this raised dead? We have second leper plus. We got a leper gnome and an og merchant. So you could just raise dead and then leper plus hero power the four four yeah. and then push five damage face. I think yeah, I like actually, that. Yeah, it's much better than defending a void shard. I mean, he also wants to get this peasant down, right? But actually, peasant isn't actually that good here. He would prioritize uh, damage. Yeah. The other option is you can raise dead, trade the three two, and og merchant the four four, and then also get down like the peasant. Plus a two drop. Mm -hmm. I think both plays are probably fine. Yeah. Oh. oh this. So he kind of. Twilight Disruptor. I just kind of ignore Vandar entirely. What is it? Yeah, I. I don't know how much I like this play. It's aggressive. Um, uh, it's aggressive, but I think there was like a better way to be aggressive that turn, anyways. Oh, you're sure the uh, hitting the uh, what's it? The uh, three two. You know, it dies to the explosive. Yeah, maybe try to not telegraph the explosive. Yeah. Also, he doesn't use the teacher's pet here. Okay. So anyway. I, I do like setting up the explosive, though, because Neji yeah. has, like, last turn very much went for a push face damage, ignore the board kind of play. So if you're mm -hmm. expecting him to do that again, explosive is a nice pickup. So he has a Guardian Og Merchant and Defire Slapper Gnome. And did that Leper Gnome pick up is good, because that's just two more damage face. It 
it is two more damage face, but I wonder, I don't know if Neji is going to go fast enough if he just sends everything face. I don't know if he's going to be able to kill before Rebob's able to stabilize. Also, do these Thriving Shadows actually hit anything? There's one race dead left, right? Yeah, it's one raise dead. Um, if he draws man crick, they'll draw wife, but... <laughs> I feel like we have to get down second explosive here. Cause it oh just... yeah, this is an explosive ice trap. Um, depending zoo, I think he has five striders on board. Hit, <laughs> hit two face, right? Interesting. Ops for teachers. Oh, like nice trap. So Neji can set up a three turn lethal if we just void shard ping face. I like void shard ping face. Because <laughs> uh, your opponent has seven on board, so they would need yeah. to add 11 more power next turn to kill you. Oh, but he has the ice trap up, so. Yeah, so, yeah, the, the shard would get countered, but it would still set up a three turn, even if it gets mm -hmm. ice trapped, because you just go ping, then void shard ping, then void shard ping. I don't think Hunter has very many comeback mechanics from low life totals. Like, this um, weapon could possibly hit another ice trap, but... 13 health is probably what he's going to have to work with for the rest of the game. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it was exactly. And does he hit the leper? No. Or he defies leper. He does. That's an upgrade, Just pushing more face damage. I like it. Now that's value. Two mana. Teacher's pet. Two mana teacher's pet. I, I think you just like play the teacher's pet, play the Rinlings, play explosive trap, and try and race. Racing's gonna be tough against two void shards. And it's pretty obvious that he has both void shards in hand from the from yeah, two uh yeah, Twilight Deceptors. Yeah, you, well you know there's no shadow spells left in deck because we've seen <laughs> The thrive hit nothing. Mm -hmm. Now this is like, what do you lead here, if you're uh, Neji? Because you're flying around ice trap again. Yeah, it's it's a tough spot because you have to play around that second ice trap, mm -hmm. but you can also call the bluff. And if it's not ice trap, then you set up two turn. What is a loon's will? I mean, do you have the time, though? You probably do have the time. That's what, potential 12 face damage? I, I think trade. You, you just play the Thrive, though, to test for yeah. an Ice Trap and then Shard mm -hmm. and say that they don't have 10 damage from hand. I mean, you might be thinking, like, you could have a King Crush off the top. And it's... Yeah, he is dead to exactly King Crush. <laughs> Like, yeah, this big hunter. Also, what was it? Wing Commander Eichmann? That's yeah. a card. Eichmann into King Crush would also... So maybe you trade off your board to play around Ikman into King Crush, because if you don't have any minions on board, then Ikman can't go... Or Ikman can't pull additional beasts. Actually, oh, he, he used his uh, counterspell test. Uh, are we going to see him get punished for not trading? You just play Ikman. Yeah. Is there... Oh. Because if he hit... Yeah, if he... the if King he, Crush. If he continues trading, then he gets King Crush. Oh. I think it's guaranteed. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Neji got punished for not trading off his board. <laughs> and that's oh the my game. God. <laughs> I... I don't know how much like you play around Ikman there, but it is the one of two cards that lose the game for the priest. I think you have to trade off there. Man, imagine not playing around Ikman. And, uh, <laughs> I, I don't think that's a card that's very popular. So I, I don't think 
Big Beast Hunter is a very popular deck. So it's definitely definitely a situation of you don't really know what to play around. And uh, yeah, hitting double Overwhelm into Vandar on curve is mm -hmm. probably the one way that the Hunter does win that game. Man, that's a, that's a huge win for, um, for Bobson. Now, I'm not yeah. sure, like, Neji was expecting that, so, like, does, does Control Warrior actually beat that? Uh, does it beat Beast Hunter? Probably. <laughs> I just, Wait. it's it's close though. Yeah. Oh, this is. Oh yeah, it's legacy. Not. <laughs> I was about to go. We're gonna see the druid from Revobson, but apparently not. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, Dolph has an opening. Oh, it's uh, against. Oh, it's Thief Rogue. Yeah. It's actually, well, it's actually kind of hard to hand. Like, do you double peasant here? Because I, uh... because he high rolled the druid, so like he can answer one peasant with his hero power. I think you do just double peasant, anyways. <laughs> what is it? What is it? Because you can just follow it up with double one drop next turn. Yeah, you kind of have to kill the peasant here if you're. For Bobson. Like, uh, Peasant's the best. Actually, it's probably the only. It's the main card draw. Right? Yeah, it's pretty much the only source of card draw for yeah. the, the priest. And this, is, this is just a brutal opening from Shadow. <laughs> Dude, any attendant opening is brutal. Yes, but. But he does have the uh, double agent, so it's not. So you can't fight for board, but it's going to be impossible to get rid of the shadow attendant. Yeah, especially well, when yeah. Trog plus Divine Shield as well, so you can't, like, passage into clears because the Trogs. Mm -hmm. Dude, Trog is so annoying. It's still annoying. What <laughs> is Elune's will? But yeah, this is actually. It's a pretty complicated turn because. You're losing board unless you put a ping into that, into, ping into a 1-3. I don't think you want to put a ping into 1-3 this turn. You just want to flood and go face. Mm -hmm. you do here is the rogue. I think you got to rip a passage. Like I, th I feel like you need a high roll with Wand yeah. Thief. So or... he, okay. So what does um? He has three. His deck has seen three cards that weren't part of his class, right? Mm -hmm. So the Knolls cost three. I believe so. Yeah. I haven't been tracking Knoll cost. Yeah. Or right, you got uh, Pillager, which is not bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can kill the attendant. Kill. Uh, I, I feel think, like we really wanted to kill the attendant there. Attendant. And, I mean, I, I understand killing Trog because it's annoying and the peasant because of card draw, but attendant's actively murdering you. Yeah, because right now we have. There's 15 damage on board. Yeah, you're dead to hero power next turn. Mm. Yeah. If you're because dead, your you power just, thrive your power for thrive. it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure if he has an out. Uh, the out is like wand thief in the counter spell, except for that you still lose because of Ray's dead. I, yeah, I don't know if there's an out here. <laughs> Ah, we go Secret Passage into Prep, Reconnaissance, plus Crash, and then Backstab our own Crash. Interesting. 
found that out for Robobs. You know, he still dies to uh, attendant pings over turns, though, right? You with that line. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just hero power phase, yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know why we thought that much about it. I mean, he's got nine, so he's representing 13, technically 15 with the hero power. I'm not so. Uh, not sure if that actually. If you can magically pull out 15 burst damage. I don't think he can. Especially yeah. not with these generations. Yeah, I don't think Fiendish Circle is the thing he's looking for. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Uh, yeah, that was a series. pretty just brutal opening <laughs> from that priest, and the rogue did not see a lot of its good early game tools. Mm -hmm. uh, some interesting cards in the um, the rogue deck, though. We saw Contraband Stash and Vanessa, which weren't in the previous iterations of the deck pre nerf yeah. Uh, he's doing a greedy version, so he hid those cards on purpose, probably. Probably. So, it's 1 1. We got a Warlock and Warrior for Neji to get through, and a uh, Druid and Rogue for Robobson. Do you think he runs the Rogue back? Probably. Yeah. Although, in the. Uh, warrior and warlock. It depends on what the druid is. Okay, it's actually druid this time. <laughs> oh, yeah, hero power changed. It was a. Uh, oh, what the? Survival druid? This oh, he's got overgrowth. Cloud druid. <laughs> he's got we overgrowth. Have, we have overgrowth and guardian animals. Okay. I think Al's gonna have a bit of trouble here. I mean, uh, the Al lock. Because there's no, like, Plague of Flames, right? How do you deal with a big minion? Zorand? Uh, you can do, like, these complicated clears with Moarg, Artificer, and Grimoire, but you can usually only do that once. So, it, it'll it'll probably end up being pretty tough for the Warlock here. So he has to full combo. That means a uh, double Flactor fee on Tamsin onto, like, a seven minion board. Right? Uh -huh. I mean, depends how much health the yeah. druid's able to gain, yeah. or how much health they have on board. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, he drew Rod, so he's good at the... To draw Rod. Yeah. Classic druid passed the first three turns into ramp. Uh, hero power on two, coin overgrowth on three. I don't know if we're passing. <laughs> I mean, what are you coining Overgrowth into? A teacher's pet? That is Thresher. Take your pick. No, yeah, I mean, so, but if you wait and use the coin, wait on, the, what was it, the turn after Overgrowth, you coin into eight, which is your uh, guardian animal. Yeah. Definitely Another. worth saving the, you can consider at least saving yeah. me. But... I mean, now we have Pouch, so we can go Thresher plus Pouch to get a coin and or Innervate, or Innervate and or Bloom to play GA next turn anyways. Uh, I feel like I wanted Innervate for GA. Uh, he has, doesn't have a 9. Yeah. I also kind of want to play Primordial Protector. As opposed yeah. to guarding animals here. Because you get a... Oh. I mean, this is a pretty good turn. Yeah, not bad for turn five. Yeah. What does Neji do here? Uh, we have to figure out how to assemble a clear for this. I mean, you got one minion, so Armor Vendor Gorm, Grimoire does two to everything. Then you, like, Mortal I... Coil to 6-3? Like, it doesn't seem very uh, winning. Yeah, I, I don't know if I want to use that Grimoire here. I mean, Grimoire effectively like... deals 10 damage, right? And it empties your hand. 
yeah, yeah the, the emptying hand for the backfire yeah. makes it make more sense for sure. Mm -hmm. So now we go Drain Soul the 6 4 and then double Mortal Coil. I think so. And there's no way you're not Drain Soul Coil. You could drain no you're not touch if you want yeah. health, but I feel like coil is definitely better. I'm not sure if he's... Oh, he's, he's pulling out the vendor. Armor. Light, use armor. Uh, does he... Uh, he doesn't have the Grimoire in hand. And there's no, like, Plague of Flames equivalent in Warlock. So, yeah... Like I am usually loath to play minions in the uh, in this deck, but like it's standard, so it's a bit of a different, <laughs> bit of a different deck. Yeah, uh, I will say though, Dreadlich Tamsin seems pretty good here. You overdraw one, All right? Uh, and you can start with just touch on the four five, and then Dreadlich. Yeah. They are spirit school. I mean, school spirit, then Tamsin. And then you can touch this six. No. I don't uh, think so. Six. Just because I want mana left over to be able to play like Drain Soul to kill the eight six. Like, I think I just want to play the zero mana touch. I mean, I think your hand size is the priority here because you're overdrawing unless you get rid of some cards, and the best card to get rid of is um, either Touch or Ghoul Spirits. Right. Okay. The offer to Touch. Because, uh, oh yeah, because the uh, Teacher's Pets have Death Rattle, so they drop a minion so you could potentially kill clear them with Ghoul Spirits. Yeah, so now we can... We can school spirits and touch the, the giant, and that that is a oh, full school clear. spirits makes Although things I worse. Think we're roping. Ah, oh, we're gonna tempo viper. Nice. I'm guessing Neji roped out the end of that turn because I don't yeah. know if that was entirely optimal. <laughs> I mean, this is so awkward from that bloom. He's overloaded for two. Yeah, and Neji knows there's survive one hand, so we're. <laughs> Never giving him a board to survival here. Do you pop your death row? Not sure if I would have, but yeah. certainly can. I mean, for... Oh, you know there's a no ton way. of AoE in Warlock, right? So you have to space out your threats. Mm -hmm. So I that... really like not playing the Zero Man 6-6 six, six here. The Moarg pickup seems huge, though, because we can go Moarg, Spirits, Touch for a full clear. Yeah, and they buffed it, so it survives to the uh, School Spirits yeah. turn. Yeah. I'm not getting any younger. <laughs> remember when it was remember when it was a mere 2-4 and it died to School Spirits? Yup. Yeah. Yeah, it was one less mana, but, it, you know. Man is, a, man is a meme in this Warlock deck because of Rod. Very true. Yeah, we we can also play Rod. We can go yeah. Artificer, Rod, Spirits, Touch. So and then trade our Wicked Shipment to get a first tick on the Rod. I really would start... How many cards are left in deck? Nine? And Nine. three of them are... Um, what? Those 3-3 three, three things? Mm -hmm. Seems like we're going for a full-blown evil clear here. Yeah. Maybe just not wanting to use the Moark. Yeah, I guess with Mark Surviving Spirits, you can go Moark Double Spirits to clear a board of 8-8 Clowns. Yeah. Which uh, will probably end up being relevant. I want to see if he actually plays a Strongman here. Because I think he'd do. Cause you're tr yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, if I'm Neji, I just go Owl Grimoire and hit the 50-50. <laughs> yeah. Because you're not developing... Um... Uh, do you need? I don't think. Do you need the mana cheat at this point? I don't think you do because you hit Tamsin. So, yeah. You hit. You really want to be trading the wicked shipments though, too, right? So your turn might be Humongous Owl, Grimoire, 
hope to God you hit the 50-50 and then trade Wicked Shipment. Yeah, because you're never dead even if you do miss the 50-50 because this Druid deck doesn't run burst and you know yeah, you can clear a board of Alternatively, clouds. you can raw arena bread baker heal up nine then you can rod trade wicked shipments and see what you get from there <laughs> yeah that's definitely not a bad play either because yeah. we don't have phylactery in hand yet so yeah. we'll need to draw some cards in the near future yeah. and you also need to start trading these wicked shipments oh interesting seems like we run two copies of wicked shipment hmm. oh Does Nature Studies ever find lethal here? Not quite. Uh, I guess there is, maybe... I don't even think there's potential lethals with Scenarian. I think the max you can do is Scenarian 8. Well, yeah, now we can just go... <laughs> Moark, Spirit, Spirits. I don't think you use both Spirits here, right? You need to clear your own minions for the Owl turn? Otherwise, yeah, they would just yeah go. you can't go Morg Grimoire Spirits as well. Oh, that works, yeah. I'm not getting any younger. You must be thinking, like, you just, like the way this Druid wins this, right, is that you just make a huge clown board, and then you can't guarantee the uh, all the eight damages go face. What is taking I... so long? If you have like seven imps that all have two yeah. death rattles, though, like that, you're not doing that consistently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, we're gonna just see trade with the 3 3 and then spirits. We guarantee the eight damage goes face. Mm -hmm. And then we can end things off with rod plus tap. Hey, tap last. Half last. Keck Delving. Mm -hmm. You need to draw a phylactery soon. Yeah, I mean we're just we're just in phylactery waiting right if we're catching. Uh well if we hit uh, I'm gonna say if we hit Alakir or uh the uh eight eight demon hunter card off of that scenario board, the less potential lethal that turn. I think you try. Well, if you do use the uh, what's it called, the Moon Touch Amulet. Now there's a there's lethal outs, right? With the resizing pouch. Yeah. Oh, is this enough? Although speaking of lethal outs, we get uh, four imps plus Tamsin. Four imps plus Tamsin. Five uh, plus Black Terry, Five minions. Plus double that's death rattles is 80 damage. I think that's enough. Yeah, that should be enough. Yeah, we do uh, 64 to our opponent's face, and our opponent is well below 64. Hopefully Neji sees it. That's just game right there. Even hit both minions, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And we still have our Tams in two if we needed 16 mm -hmm. more damage for some reason. Alright. Yeah, I mean, now I think. Now it's the, on this warrior. Like you know, I think this warrior's gonna have a tough time against the druid. <laughs> Depends on the warrior, but yeah. my my gut would agree. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it is going to be just that classic charge OTK warrior. Arise and carry out our lady's will. So this is definitely a. So the cutting class and the Rancor give it away that it's uh, the OTK, mm -hmm. right? 
Well, we haven't seen Galvangar uh, I mean, or yeah, Faceless would... yet. The Galvangar I... Faceless would definitely give it away, too. Yeah, I think seeing the armor vendor, this oh, you might want... just be pure control warrior. Pure Copium warrior. Oh, man. I think... Yeah. Let me... Let me see if I can predict the exact list. Wait, so how does, uh, well, there, actually, if Mutants hits your charge, you might have a way out, right? Yeah, the, the best option for the warrior in this matchup is if you're able to hit something big with Mutantus and not only take it away from them, but also just get a large minion. Because mm -hmm. uh, Druid doesn't deal with your opponent's large minions very well. Mm-hmm. There's a survival pickup. No overgrowth though. Where's or guff. Yeah. I was gonna say, do you ever just rip cutting class here? I don't think so. <laughs> okay. I I think Nechi's just running the control warrior list that I sent him for Tespa last week. <laughs> oh. Which, uh, would have been pretty good into Beast Druid and Face Hunter, I will say. Yeah. Oh, that minefield pickup's annoying. Because you have your armor vendor. I yeah. Uh, I, mean, I, I guess now we rip the cutting class. Yeah. I mean, how good is he at the game? Can he minefield? To a rancor, clear. Uh, or is that a disgusting waste of resources? I think that's just too <laughs> many resources. I don't think you're sc yeah. that scared of a five four. I mean, it's the card draw, right? That you're scared of because you don't want him to card draw on the ramp. Right. Yeah, but you have like you have brawl and coerce in hand, so you have decent Got big removal already. I just want to cut in class and then probably trade our heavy plate that we draw off of it. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Edgy disagrees. Yeah. Ah, there's the ramp. Uh. <laughs> you know, the, the Rancor wasn't actually, and the minefield weren't actually getting much value in this matchup, right? Yeah, I, Rancor really only gets value if you're, like, comboing it with Bearov to get enough full clear out of it. And this sets up really nicely for Mutantis, as long as it doesn't right. the, uh, we always hit the... Uh, oh. What do you hit? Probably, uh, oh, he hit a broomstick. <laughs> Not quite what we wanted to hit there. Definitely a below I, average uh, result. I generally find, like, against Clown Druid, I try and save Mutanus until after they've played Survival. Because then, like, even if you hit a Broom, it's still a 9-9. Alright, how good is he at, uh, Brawls? I, I don't think you can Brawl this. I think you have to save the Brawls. Headmaster Kel'Thuzad? I mean, you can't coerce this then, right? You definitely just coerce the 10-10. Uh, turn 10, though, when we play this Kel'Thuzad Brawl and win? I mean, Kel'Thuzad Brain Bladestorm, right? Uh, I think that, that play would be a lot better if our minion didn't die to Bladestorm first. I mean, you trade the Mutantis in every time before you do that, right? Uh, this might have to be a brawl. Yeah. You know, if uh, you if you email greetings before you brawl, you always win it. It's a little known fact. True. That's hard coded into this game. What? I don't know. I was, 
I was playing this warrior deck in my Tespa match, and we had an armor vendor on board. Our opponent has a full board, we play our brawl, and I go like, all right, I think their 2-3 is going to win. My teammate points and goes, no, our armor vendor's frozen. That means it wins the brawl. The armor vendor won the brawl, so I think it just manifest it, always win. Uh, speaking of uh, winning, I don't think I don't think this warrior is doing it. I mean, you have to brawl here. Yeah, you're. You even know there's 30, a survival in hand. Even turning 30 damage into 10 gives you another turn. I think you just button pass, though. Yeah. I, I feel like Bladestorm is too valuable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a clown. There's a clown. You have a 10 mana card in hand, so. Yeah, so we play our 14 14 Yashirai. Oh, wait, the other 10 mana card. Yeah, the other 10. You know? It's. Uh. Bladestorm, end turn, copium. <laughs> Bladestorm, hero power, end turn. It's the play where we are dead. And then you can have the... Or you can uh, Headmaster Brawl and just hope for the best. I, the upside of getting a 6-6 six, six if you win the coin toss doesn't work that though. <laughs> so now we can tempo Headmaster Keltus. Yeah. Oh. I mean... Uh, I mean, you're saving the Brawl Keltus on play for these clowns, right? Yeah. yeah. Alright, play the clowns, Rebob. Yeah, you won't know what hit him. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, oh, yeah, we play oh, the broom first to get uh, to play around Blades. He's living in fear of Bladestorm. Yeah. So we brawl? <laughs> no, we have to kill Tizod first. We need to win the game off this brawl. Uh, actually, I think you cut in class then brawl, because you're not dead if a 12 12 wins. You're mm -hmm. usually not dead if 12 12 wins. So, what are you looking? Actually, what are you looking for with this cutting class, though? Uh, Lord Barov to clear the next board of clowns. Yeah. I guess the the second board of clowns won't be corrupted. Oh, he's oh, going for he's it. it. <laughs> Does he win the one and eight? <laughs> oh. Oh, oh my god. Yo! <laughs> no way! <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my. Now that's a. I mean, it's not gonna matter because he plays the Sarge here, but like. that That's going on the highlight reel. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this Shield Shatter, though. Yeah, Shield Shatter will clear everything but the charge. So yeah, That's kind of a big deal. <laughs> yeah, that's... Not clearing the charge might be an issue. <laughs> Worthy. You know, I, I know that Warrior is starved for card draw, but I, I find Neji's choice to run Cutting Class in a deck with no weapon quite interesting. Wait, there's not a bulk work in here? I mean, we've seen 17 cards of the deck, and we haven't seen a weapon yet. <laughs> I mean, okay, I'm just going to assume there's a bulk work in this control warrior. I would guess there's probably two Outriders axes, a Rokara, and a Bulwark in there. <laughs> we just have not seen any of them. But, I mean, yes. You kind of have to, like, heavy play and shield shatter here, right? Uh, we can play Bulwark, and we're not dead. So that might be what he goes for. Mm -hmm. Just Bulwark hero power. Cause you you trade hate off. to see this clown on clown violence that we are witnessing. Yeah. Yeah, because Bulwark's going to buy you a couple of turns. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, the issue is we're out of brawls. We have like one other large board clear, and I don't think we're winning this game. I mean, maybe Ralgor gets there, right? <laughs> Kofio, Ralgor gets there, right? <laughs> right, guys. Hmm. I guess you played the strong man to play around uh Blade Storm. Blade Storm, yeah. So uh, uh Edgy top decks bear off. Winnable. Oh. So if we trade this heavy plate into bear off, it's winnable. Winnable? Winnable. I mean at this point. That's your only out. Yeah. Because if you're a uh, car here, play if you're, heavy play. If you're a car, you lose the uh, bulk work, and then you're just dead every time. Hmm. That is indeed not Lord Barov. I think you're Al Gore here. Actually, you probably don't play. You just concede without showing anything, right? These are close deck lists. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Rebub can probably guess most of the cards in this deck, though. Mm-hmm. And Neji does have one more game to try and get this warrior through to a much better matchup in Thief Road. Is it much better? He's running all the greed. I... Is, Is it, it a good matchup? <laughs> no. Is it better than Clown Druid? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is just lethal with hero power. Uh, n yeah, he's got two charges. Yep. We could have even hit with the 12 attacks and then killed him with the zero power. Yeah. Alright, it's all on this. It's all on this. Game, Game five. five. Alright. Like, I, I don't actually know how this matchup is going to go down. Like, uh, what I'm assuming is that uh, the Thief Rogue is going to get a bunch of 10 cost spells randomly and uh, play them over and over again with reconnaissance. 10 cost? No, the Thief Rogue is just going to generate two masks of Cthulhu and then oh, play yeah. the Contraband Stash to replay that, them. That's even better. I was thinking he'd go the. Uh, he'd steal a uh, survival just to invoke some PTSD. Oh man. Yeah, I, I I've played this a bit Wait. from the warrior side. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, I keep I saw the Draxis and I was so confused. I forgot that rogues can be any class. Yes. I think the the important thing with this warrior is just trying to minimize that early chip damage from the rogue. Because I've generally found if you're able to get to the late game with a, a decent health total, you can close it out. But if you just take a bunch of early damage, like gnolls and such, it's a lot harder. Speaking of gnoll. Speaking of gnoll. <laughs> so they're going to cost... Gnolls are going to cost one... They're free next turn. The Nulls are free next turn, but you know what else is free next turn? The Shield Shatter. <laughs> like the, the one answer for double Null. Oh, what did he get? Wait, is that a rogue spell? No, it's- uh, Oh, that's huge! The rats of extraordinary size. That's a huge pickup. I. It's if... seven one. <laughs> Actually, uh, I get it. It's a huge pickup because yeah, yeah. the rats are huge. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's an extraordinary pickup. Yeah. <laughs> Extraordinarily large pickup for a Bob's. Actually, is that a... okay? In all seriousness, though, that one data. If he um, 
if he just tempos it out and gets 7 1 1. And then the like, warrior plays the Rancor. <laughs> yeah. I think. And if he gets the um, cards in hand, they just come down as 1 1 to Ganoff's Reconnaissance, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Yes. Oh, those aren't what you're looking for. Actually, the uh, Cantor thread. I. I guess you're looking for insane value cards, right? Yeah. That's why I'm a little unsure about playing this Vanessa. Like, what if we saved that for Rattle? Maybe it's too, he think it's a, he needs to get his damage done now, and it'd be too late for like a if your opponent if your control warrior opponent's playing big guys, it's probably too late for Vanessa to have an impact have an impact. Yeah, that's that's pretty fair. You you would need like both you would both need to copy Rattle Gore and then also like generate some way to deal with it. Mm -hmm. This Outrider axe though. Oh yeah, Outrider's axe is. I mean, for the, for the warrior side, it's just such an incredible card, letting you answer these early minions and draw right. cards. Just another reconnaissance. Actually, there's a rogue windus with um, recurring um, crimes. If you generate Rustwix off of this reconnaissance or yeah. Slosh Burglar, then yeah, probably. Yeah. Because uh, we didn't see any pieces of the Galvangar package from Neji, so my guess is... Mm -hmm doesn't have a great way to close out this game. Yeah. He has Ralgor, that's the best way to close out games. I don't know what you're talking about. Very true. Yeah. Well, especially when we copy the Ralgor with Headmaster Kelpod. Yeah, this is just hit face, re-equip yeah. weapon, hero power, I think. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't re-equip weapon, because you want a Rokara next turn. Yeah. That two degrees. Alright, Reconnaissance. Oh, that's a mountain bear. That is indeed a mountain bear. This reconnaissance is getting pretty... I mean, um... This contraband stash is getting pretty juicy. Was he off the Mutanus before Rakara? Actually, Rakara doesn't actually do anything here, right? Gain 10 armor, it get a weapon. It gains 10 armor, it upgrades our hero power, and it gives us a weapon. I'd say it does nothing, but it's definitely not great here. Oh, that was not what you want to be doing. Okay, it doesn't do nothing, but it's not optimal here because of the... Yeah, I'm a little unsure about the mute play, though. I feel like you can hold off on it a little longer to like wait until your opponent's hand is a little more tailored, because you really want to hit either Smite or Edwin. Oh, he's dumping that. a uh, passage. Yeah, we need hand space for these rats. Yeah. I mean, I'm, uh, I was thinking, yeah, you just don't play the rats at extraordinary size at this game. That was also what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if I want rats. Uh, I think this is just like has to be a card. trade Rancor Outrider's axe. That Actually, right. Rancor seems insane here. What am I talking about? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know anything. Oh, I think you trade first, though. Send Mutanus in. Yes. You send a Mutanus, you play that Rancor, mm -hmm. you gain a bunch of armor, you play your axe, kill the two for a draw card. Mm -hmm. I don't know what Neji's thinking about. I mean, this is 12 armor. Yeah. Rancor's never getting better than this. I mean, with the stash, though, he's, gonna, he's always going to get... Actually, the... Doesn't Rats of Extraordinary Size mess up his stash because if he plays that before the minions? His like, minions yeah, just... if, he, if he plays these rats, he is going to get more rats from this contraband stash. Mm -hmm. But... They also do. <laughs> I yeah, like. Let's see it. Okay, Dude, there's more rats. Oh, actually, this is a lot the of rats. We need a hand space yeah. for more rats. This is actually a lot of rats. Who step? 
But you're not stepping anything. Yeah. Actually, does the controller run out of resources? I don't think so. I think the the fact the rats are five five, so they just die mm -hmm. to shield shatter. Like mm -hmm. this feels like a brawl, though. And these uh, and Candler Thread Prime resurrects Candler Thread Prime. Let's not forget about this. This mm -hmm. is good. These are a lot of one mana five fives in hand. Yes. So you can't can't use shield shatter here because of that. Blade Storm is hilariously bad. Yeah, I feel like this is just an insta brawl. Uh, I guess we can probably trade Viper first. What? Uh, you kind of you want to use the Viper to get rid of the uh, Outrider attack. Oh, right? uh, actually, yeah, that's that's true. Why don't we just brawl play Viper? Yeah. Or oh, he's... play Viper first. Get lucky, easy. Oh. Oh, so close. So close. All right, so the rogue's putting cards in his deck, so that means that the rogue wins in fatigue, right? Uh, they're still even in fatigue right now. Oh, there's a snowman. There's a snowman. Now this contraband stash gets us more snowmen. Or it just gets us a bunch of rats. We'll see. I feel like now is what you want to shield check, though. I'm sure that you This seems like a pretty good heavy play hero power shield chatter. <laughs> We're also a running double. two vipers. Wait, why are you running two vipers? Maybe expected poison round. Mm -hmm. So heavy plate reduces the cost by of oh, shield shower by eight. Mm -hmm. So so he's got um, six mana left to play with after that. Yeah. So I think like you always start with trading the viper here, or you can just slam Rakara and then shield shatter. You could, but I kind of want to get value out of this weapon, even if said value mm -hmm. is just six damage face. Because we don't have any other weapons in our deck. We have the Bulwark, but this actually, is our second axe. Actually, kind of need the axe, though, right? You need the card draw? I don't know if you do. Alright. Probably going to trade the Viper, right? Yeah, trade Viper. Then, yeah, yeah just, just have you play Hero Power, Shield Shatter, push mm -hmm. the three. Are you okay? Hero powers or after the power last. You know, wasting three mana is a lot, a lot better than wasting four. So I understand the. Uh... But yeah, it's just easy snowman. And some rats. Don't forget the rats. Do you commit a lot of rats though? <laughs> we commit two. <laughs> Like the rats, I mean, the rogue's just gonna outvalue the uh, warrior, right? It. I don't know. Uh, there's not that much more value for the rogue. We have like one more discover, one contraband stash. That's a lot, though. There's a lot of removal left for this warrior. <laughs> worthy or like, unworthy. Okay, let's um. Let's think about resources here. But he used a brawl. Did he use a blade storm? Not yet. He used a rancor. He has bear off. So he's got bear off, blade rancor. storm, rancor, blade second storm. Second shield shatter. Yeah, second shield shatter. Oh yeah, headmaster KT. Uh, probably a provoke. Probably. A prov so he's got five clears. I mean, he clearly RNG's a mass polymorph. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, Evocation. Oh, baby. Yeah, like, I, I think if you're the warrior, though, you're probably not winning in fatigue. Probably just have to draw, try and draw Rattlecore and win that yeah. way. Yeah, you have, Rattlecore is your win con. Uh, if we play Cutting Class and draw KT, I really don't mind KT Coerce mm. and just get it 9-9. Nine, nine. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think he, Neji thinks that this is going to a fatigue, so he's loath to play his Cutting Class here. Right? He's already behind two. Fatigue's yeah. a huge... But then you're all... Like, the rogue's never gonna run out of cards. Let's just... Let's just be real here. <laughs> Yeah, Rogue is probably not running out of cards. Yeah. But we can try and just put them on a clock. So, like, your play here is either Cutting Class Coerce, the 9-9. Nine, nine. Okay. Oh, there's, there's Rattle Gore. I'm not sure if you put your face into that, right? Uh, deal 9 to your opponent. Easy. And then play play goal. Just play goal. Uh, Fine. Keep your enemies close. <laughs> okay, so you're play. I think you have to play the rat here, right? I don't know if you have to. But you okay, have. You're, there's no like one forcing you to, but it just seems really good in this moment. That's uh, a mask. That mask might be an issue for <laughs> Neji. <laughs> and he's frozen. Uh, you kind of have to play around. You can't play Ralgor here. You, uh, you can Ralgor provoke, and it'll kill everything but the one two. I thought it goes in the order of play, so... Yes, it'll kill both four Oh yeah, it'll kill the five. Uh, five. Yeah, they just leave the one-two on board. You could also Rancor. Rancor is definitely not bad here. Rancor gains six. Oh, do you think he assumes about the Edwin Smite? I would, yeah, I think you, you assume that every rogue deck runs Edwin and Smite. So you have to play around ten burst? Potentially twelve? Ten, yeah, potentially more. Um... That's what Bulwark's for usually, though, is you just set up Bulwark, and they don't have a good way to pop it, so they can't Edwin smite you. But there's also a mask. Like, this is such an awkward turn. You could easily die. Like, Edwin, smite, wicked stab, you're dead. So, Ralgor provokes not an option. Interesting pushes that space. Yeah. Well, there's the step. I think you tempo the uh, mask here, right? We go mask and then we play contraband and get another mask. Easy. Yeah, this is. Uh, snowman. Is he good enough to get mask? But to be fair, we played like seven rats that game, and we only got yeah. one of them. So I think that was still pretty lucky. <laughs> yeah, that's really lucky. You kind of have to brawl this, right? Yes. You're you're brawling this, you're hoping the 3-2 wins, so you can hero power it, and then you're setting up bulwarks, and you're not dead to admin plus smite. Because your opponent just played mask, so now you can bulwark safely. Like, he saw the... Um mini snowman so he has to know he has the brute in hand so he just it's, he's at uh, 11 he still has another shield shadow left right I believe so like, this is yeah, just so this is so awkward because you kind of have to um you have to brawl this I mean you have to coerce it whatever it lives or you play the heavy plate 
I mean, you have to brawl this. And I think that's the initial step. I I don't know what we're... Oh. But zero power, then brawl, then bulwark. Okay. Yeah, okay. This is awful. <laughs> Sadly, we don't gain any armor. Not an honorable kill. Yeah. Oh, that's rough. Impossible. Oh. Oh, he uh, rubbed out did the. Did not get the bulwark off. Oops. Yeah, that's a win for the thief rogue. As as I said, they're gonna generate a mask of Dune and then win. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see if Rebob wants to come in for an interview. I mean, those contraband stashes were worth their weight in that game. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Control Warrior always lost to Greed and Druid. All right, so. Robobson says he needs a few minutes. But we have some time, because we don't have any other matches left. Um, yeah, Mask is good, and it breaks my heart, because <laughs> it always stings seeing someone, especially your teammate, lose to a lot of generation. Because oh, yeah. it gives me PTSD back to Barons when it was just Priest, was just generating everything, and it was very, very unfun to play against. But it was a good. This was a very good set overall. Mm -hmm. um, well played by Robobson to get to win. Um, the series as a whole now is. It's now seven to nine. Seven to nine. Nine seven in Clownstone Academy's favor as based took a three to two win over my Anadon, and Robobson takes a three to two. So it's. They were three points, so it's three points apart. Because, yeah, base takes us to eight. Re Neji takes us to ten. So it's ten to... Ten to s whatever. And, uh... uh I you guys are at... Yeah. You guys are at 106 versus 103, right? Yeah. For... For, uh... But the, we're cross-conference. And yeah, Robobson oh. is here. Also... Okay. Hello, Robobson. Oh, Captain, my Captain. <laughs> How's it going, everyone? Uh, it's going well. That was a pretty per pretty interesting series. You you saw Warrior, you said this is probably Control Warrior, and brought things that could do well into it instead of playing like your regular you know, Beast Druid or Face Hunter. Very good game plan. Yeah. I, kn I knew Neji would play Control Warrior because it's Neji. So... I just kind of honed in on that. The rogue was a bit iffy, but I did a lot of testing with just playing Maester Rogue, but with contraband stash, and you yeah. can generally just have value. If he'd brought like the charge Avagar thing, I the rogue would probably have lost that one. So when I realized it was just pure control, I was very happy. I knew I could just out value it. Yeah, it was definitely an interesting bring of just the pure control instead of the the Galvangar charge that's been seeing a lot more play recently. Yeah, like, he, he brought the aggro Shadow Priest, which kind of told me that he had a vague idea of what I was going to try and do, but then still didn't switch the one attack. So, a bit surprising there. Yeah. I was definitely interested by that uh that beast hunter ring. Um uh, my thoughts looking at it was that you'd probably bring quest hunter and then leave up shaman for it, but I guess beast hunter drew a Vandar on four and then won. Yeah, I mean that was that was not a matchup I was expecting to win. Um but then I drew what's it called? Itch Itchmar? Ikemen. Yeah, Ikman. Ikman. Yeah, Ik Ik Ikman on eight. 
Paul King crush for exactly thought with the hero power was was pretty good as a draw. Yeah, yeah. Above average. Yeah. yeah. With, with Neji having enough minions on the board to guarantee I pulled the crush. Yeah. yeah um, we we're, were discussing that like the only way he loses is exactly King Crush or Ikman off the top, so we should trade I, off his minions to get rid of one of those. But uh, uh oh yeah, King Crush would have been playable with the hero power as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, but I, if I got to play that into the control worry, it's it's absolutely free. So, it was probably going to win anyway. Mm-hmm. Maestro still could win games. Yep. yep. Yeah, it turns out the Nulls are still pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Nulls I mean, didn't do much that game. Yeah. The Nulls did literally nothing that entire series. <laughs> the Contraband Stash, now that's where it's at. I uh, we played like five or six rats and only got one off of contraband stash, which is definitely nice. Maybe it's like that. Um, you only can get one unique spell. It's maybe it's contraband stash. Uh, unique spell. I don't. I don't know. I haven't played enough thief rogue with contraband stash to actually test that. I I think I played three rats. I'd only played one before this first stash. Before the first dash, I tried not to play any rats. Before mm-hmm. the second one, I just had to play like yeah. all manner of. I, I was I was hoping I'd get the flashy mask of Cthulhu into stash second mask of Cthulhu equip the axe for lethal, but yeah, never. Mm-hmm. Neji did say to me that he he ran out of time to equip the work. Yeah, yeah, he, he didn't. Yeah. He didn't. He didn't realize that you can't play cards during brawls animation, which makes about zero sense for Hearthstone. But you know, I. I mean, it's just I mean, something that you don't. He. I mean, you, you should you be able. To, you should be able to play cards during it. You, you can't play cards while other animations are resolving. Gotcha. At, I didn't realize that. Unless you are an APM mage cheater. Um, oh yeah, tr- true. Yeah, you usually can. Well, I mean, in a like light and APM, like it's during just specifically brawl. Because <laughs> when I play, because when you play Ignite Mage, you're just supposed to spam. You're just supposed to spam cards even with animations going until you have just your Ignite. But yeah, yeah. but you, you you gotta wait a certain amount of time. Uh, yeah, that yeah. that kind of timing is what like being. Neji's captain and watching him on stream is an incredibly stressful experience because yeah. he doesn't do anything till the rope starts. And I'm glad it worked out in my favor this time. Yeah. <laughs> Much as I'm glad he didn't bring a single win condition and his warrior besides Rattle Gore. Gotcha. I, I uh, am proud of Neji, though. He is learning. Uh, every time I've watched him play previously, I'll message him afterwards and go, what did Rattlegore do to your family? Why didn't you just play him? So we finally <laughs> just played Rattlegore, and then we lost. And then because then Scabs took, yeah. Rattle, took Rattlegore yeah. away from the world. Yeah. And maybe, yeah, I mean, that maybe game he had to just play Rattlegore twice. <laughs> yeah, but he couldn't, obviously. The second Which time he couldn't play. unfortunate. Yeah. No, nah, I mean yeah. it was a good. I don't know if you've. So that basically means this week is a best of three now. Uh, yeah, it's a best. best... Just beat my on. It's a best. Yeah, it just comes. Well. Yeah, it just comes down to. Uh, if me, if I like. So it's all up to the bottom three seeds. Diamond won already. Oh fuck yeah! Yeah, it's, right. yeah. Diamond well, started the week with the win, so it's now. Uh, now it's you have to win both matches or you're t- yeah i think if one of us wins with a certain score probably between me and Corden, our team secures the week i'm not sure because i think it's what i think it's like 10 to 7 now or something like that i can't even tell um because my anodon seven. got two seven okay so yeah it's seven. yeah it's, it's 10 four. to 7 yeah yeah it depends on scores through the final matches, but yeah. So, and I, I believe and I, in Slav Totinos. Yeah, and I play I play Totinos in like an hour forty five, in like a little over an hour from now. So that much was, as I love you, I, yeah. Uh, you need me to lose Legacy, and then you need me to win Hero. 
Yeah, no, if you could get swept in Legacy and then sweep in Hero, that would be oh, fantastic. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not planning to get swept in Legacy. Hopefully that doesn't oh, happen. God. If that happens right. two weeks I'm in a row, I'm actually on my mobile be sad. Oh, man. So All right, sounds gonna good, I'm going to have to dash oh, well, lovely speaking to you, gents. Yes, always. Ooh. And... I got some news. Shout out to you, Slard and Tinos. Hope they win. Hope you lose, Fish. Nah, uh, sounds good. Goodbye. Goodbye. Right. So for a wild series, White Delight uh, apparently defeated Mr. Python. Oh, I'm still the one seed now? And when I come back? Yeah. Well, maybe when I come back. I don't know. Ah, oh. <laughs> I wanted, I was kind of, I think our team plays F2L. Verity. Actually, well, Robobson will actually be subbing for me next week. Surprise. Unsup this is very interesting. We have a lot of F2L slinging around with my with my group of teams. But anyways, um, yeah, good win to White Delight uh, mm -hmm. in Wild. Um, mm -hmm. Great stuff uh, all around for both players. I mean, it, it's tough. It, it's very interesting when you when you learn that that the brawl animation takes a long time to because I, I knew it takes a long time to actually play out. I haven't played Control Warrior in so yeah. long that it wasn't off the top of my head that he probably should have equipped the bulwark before brawling. But I mean, it's one of those things, right? It's like, it's so difficult. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, brawl is especially weird because there's certain things you can still queue up after brawl, like. If I remember correctly, you can still queue up an attack with your hero if you have yeah. a weapon. Oh, that's but so you weird. Can't queue anything else? <laughs> okay, it's, that's. It's, it's that's like one of those. It's uh, it's one of those really early game um, or it's early Hearthstone animations that just never got fixed. Oh, okay, right. yeah, that makes sense because obviously like, cards been around since the inception of the game. Yeah, yeah. Well, so back then, their spaghetti client couldn't handle you playing. Uh, playing a minion during a brawl animation i believe that's what it was so if you played a minion it would break the game look kind of like how uh, if you entombed a new anubarak that died it'd break the game oh my gosh oh anubarak <laughs> yeah it's been so long since i thought about that card um yes yeah, it's, yeah. It's, one of those, it's one of those things where if you mess up a um what was it a uh if you mess up an animation with minions during that are dead yet still on the board mm -hmm. it breaks the game because yeah. the until the brawl animation ends i guess the uh, minions are not dead yet but they're good the game thinks they're dead mm -hmm. but they're not does that make sense yeah. it will be dead but they're not at it, the moment so if you play another sense. minion so if you play another minion during that time it just freezes them on board like i've seen this a lot in wild because <laughs> You're playing a lot of brawls in wild. No, we used to be <laughs> back in the good old days before games lasted five turns minimum or back maximum. In the odd warrior days. Yeah, yeah. Odd warrior days of five months ago, six mm -hmm. months ago. Yeah. Hey, if you're on my team, I still bring odd warrior. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah animation stuff is interesting anyways um that's the only match that we have to show you today it was a pretty good match i would say i definitely one of the more enter definitely one of the more entertaining uh series i've seen recently um so yeah thank you to robobson and neji boston for playing and uh thank you to owl and memnark for you know coming aboard and casting when i only asked like last night at 1 a.m eastern that said oh i forgot to ask for casters for this so thank you guys for coming in mm -hmm. and and casting it was that's very nice and uh want to thank yeah <laughs> and uh thank you to everybody in chat for watching um hopefully you know occasionally we might get some saturday afternoon matches uh, or maybe even Sunday afternoon, depending. If you want to play, uh, then just make sure you message me with the time. Because Lotus isn't really doing a lot of school stone, but I can definitely sometimes do it. So yeah, message me if you want to play your any 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 series, uh, Legacy Hero Pro Wild. I I'm willing to cast, uh, willing to uh, show them all. 
So do we have any matches happening tonight? We do. We have some matches tonight. Thank you for uh reminding me about that because I believe I'm also casting I am casting those matches with somebody. I just have to find it on this on the match request. So we have uh Eternal versus Judo Chop at 8 p.m. Eastern. I be and I will check to see who the other caster is besides myself for Salty Saturday. It's going to be me and Dankus dad for casting that one. So tune back in at 8 p.m. Eastern for that match and uh yeah, more legacy series action in 6 hours. <laughs> And until then, have a fantastic rest of your afternoon and evening. Stay safe, everyone. We'll see you then.